I'm Chris Rose, assistant coach here at Gulf Coast State College in Panama City. Uh, I've been asked to talk to you about uh, the basics, kind of the 101, the fundamentals of, uh, of the swing and of the move uh, when you hit a baseball. So uh, that's what I'm going to do today. Um, I'll start everything kind of like Coach Schuster did with his pitching deal, uh, is we're going to teach everything basically from the ground up. Um, and I'm doing this to a level, like if I'm teaching uh, my six-year-old son the basics of hitting, that's kind of what I want to build off of or set a foundation for today with you. Um, and then as we progress through this uh, series of videos, we'll obviously uh, kick that up to a higher level as we go. Um, but from the ground up, so when I take my stance, again, if I'm teaching a six, eight, ten-year-old kid um, how to hit, uh, I would say get in some semblance of an athletic position with my feet shoulder width apart, maybe a little wider, a little narrower. This is not anything that at the college level that we dictate. At Gulf Coast State College, we don't have one way really to do anything. Uh, we try to figure out whatever that player's individual swing is and then work toward that. But as a young player, uh, you know, we do try to instruct some things to a younger kid at like a camp or something that, hey, th this, this is something that later on will give you more, okay? But I think if we can put them in a athletic position where there's less that can go wrong, uh, the better and more successful they'll be. And then obviously the more successful they are, the more fun they have in the game, the better they'll be. So uh, shoulder width apart, possibly a little bit wider. Um, knees flexed. And what I prefer now is, is teaching this at a young age is that what I want to do is have my kneecaps roughly over the balls of my feet, okay? And then what I want to do is, is sink, my, sink my butt, sink my hips about two or three inches without my knees moving forward, okay? That sets me into place. It kind of sets my hips and gets me into my hips, okay? And it also sets the angle of my body kind of like this on this angle, okay? So it takes my chest out over my knees. So now I'm in a strong and athletic position. And I kind of want to maintain that. Now you'll see some big league hitters that get into that position, okay, through their move. Okay, but as a young hitter, I would say, let's go ahead and just start him in that position, in that strong position. Okay, so feet shoulder width apart, knees over balls of feet, hips lowered without knees moving forward, which sets my spine angle. All right, hands wherever they're comfortable. Okay, but again, as a young kid, I would say just rest the bat on your shoulders and then pick it up. I would like it to be somewhere around your shoulder or slightly behind as I start. Okay, and then when we get to the top, when we talk about grip, you see that grip right there? All right, that is door knocking knuckles lined up with punching knuckles all the way to door knocking knuckles lined up with door knocking knuckles. Really don't care. As long as it's within that, I think you're fine. Where you have a problem with the grip uh, when hitting is when the door knocking knuckles get outside of the punching knuckles. We want to keep them within, okay? Uh, so like I said, hands on the shoulders, bring them up. All right, so now I'm in my stance. I've created my stance. All right, looking out at the pitcher, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have some type of negative move, okay? Now, I can either do this in my stance and preload my weight in the backside a little bit, a little Pete Rose-esque, okay? Or I can stay centered and move the weight into my back hip. One of the two, either start it there or move it into my back hip. I really don't want my head to move a whole bunch at this point in time. I kind of like my head to stay still. It will move down as the swing progresses, okay? But I really don't want it to move back up and not forward the, all that much, especially uh, when the heel comes down. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so into my back hip, oh, that's my load. My rhythm into my load is getting my weight into my back hip and ready for my forward move. Uh, and stroke. So from the, from the negative move, my load, as I move forward, there's a couple things I can do here. When I take my stride, and I don't care if you leg kick, okay, quick step, I don't care how you do that. It doesn't matter to me, okay? What I want is just rhythm. I don't even care if you stride at all. I don't care, okay? But I want some semblance of rhythm getting into my back hip, okay, keeping that posture strong, and I want these hands to get over my back foot, and I basically want to create separation between my front foot and my hands. I want to create some separation there. Now, obviously, if I don't stride, if I just pick my heel up and put it down, then I'm going to have to push my hands back a little bit. That can be done through a shoulder turn, which I, I actually like that a lot, okay, or just push them away, okay? As long as you're short of an arm bar, an arm bar is when the arm extends fully, okay, that's not good. 
but that's not an arm bar because there's still a little bend in there. I'm good with that, okay? So anything prior to an arm bar, I'm okay with. And at this point in time, I would like to, right before my forward move, everything, when I load my hip up, is gonna turn on the front side of my body slightly in. Okay, so I'm gonna coil slightly on the front side of my body. And then forward move, get my stride foot down on time. Okay, where my front foot and my hands have separated. All right, and then from the ground up is, is the way this is gonna happen. The next move of your swing, okay, starts with this hip. Now for some guys, depending on how you're built, okay, this hip has to start to turn and here and this shoulder must stay back. So I'm gonna to create torque there, okay? Traditionally, when this heel comes down, this heel goes up, this hip comes forward, and I'm keeping this closed off on the top, closed off my hands back as long as I can to create power and torque. Um, so yeah, so from the ground up, I create the power and torque through my feet. Heel down, heel up, hip starts forward, and I'm trying to stay closed off with my torso as long as I humanly can. And then when I release that, okay, release the barrel forward, okay, I'm gonna to try to get on plane of the, of the pitch and stay on plane. For me, I would just teach kind of a flat plane and if you have power, obviously once you hit the ball higher in the air. I mean, I think it's that simple. Uh, but if you're eight years old, you don't know if you have raw power or not. So just try to stay flat and stay on plane through the ball and get extension. So you're gonna move, move the barrel, Okay, we turn that forward and move the barrel into the slot. We, get, we stay connected, this means we're connected. My elbow and my body, we're connected. And once I get to right there, that, that contact point with the pitch middle, middle, my hands start to separate from my body. I get extension through, and then I finish, and I wanna be able to hold my finish. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that guys that hit home runs and uh, can, can balance and watch the home runs go uh, I think that, uh, I don't think that they hit the, I think they hit the home run because they could watch it. In other words, they stayed in a strong athletic stack position and because they could watch their, watch their home run, that's why they were, they created the power and the leverage that they did. So yeah, so that's uh, hitting 101. All right, hey, tip of the day, uh, wardrobe tip of the day, okay? Baseball players, pet peeve of mine. Here's where we wear a hat. Move the hair back, pull the hat down. No hair under the bill of your hat because we're not at the beach. Okay, we're in Panama City, but we're not at the beach right now. All right, you can wear your hat like this. When you're at the beach, that's fine, I don't care. But when you're playing baseball, and if you want to be recruited or seen, you need to have no hair under the bill of your hat. 